<laughs> Hello. Yay. So welcome to our, uh, <laughs> I haven't done a live in like <laughs> a week. I don't even know how to start. So we are basically, this is where our discussion about the master class of NK Jemison, but also most probably just us gushing about NK Jemison and the class. Um, and and just finding out that Kate has only read the first book in the trilogy. <laughs> I just outed you, but I'm just saying. No, 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 it's good. I gotta get it out now. <laughs> it's like in, in, the, in the chat and we're gonna be, you know, we're, we're not gonna say anything. Um, so we're probably just going to stick to talking about the class and, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry if y'all are like, we oh, no. need to have a spoiler discussion. I can like bow out for a little bit and then come back. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, that's the thing. It's like, it's like, cause I, I don't want even just accidentally because it is like, you it's know, so okay. You know, it's, it's just a lot of, especially since like it, 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 it affected me for weeks. Like I couldn't even talk about it. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it'll hit you as hard, but it's like for me, it was just like I, I was wrecked. Like it wrecked, yeah. me. not in like a bad way. Like oh my god, because you know, you know me. I'm usually your world was rocked. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely just like, and I couldn't even think about it yeah. without crying. Like I was all like, oh, I, or even think about thinking about it. <laughs> Like, you know, like, oh, you know that don't think, don't think of, don't think about it, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God, oh my God. And, um, and so that was honestly one of the main reasons why, um, cause I haven't done any master classes before. So that was one of the main reasons why when I saw that she was doing one, yeah. um, yeah. Okay. I need to my, turn off my mail. It's going to make, <laughs> by the way, it's informing me that we are live. We're going yeah, live. I got, hey. I got my, in the middle <laughs> too. Well, that's what, so Shay, didn't you also sign up for Masterclass, but then you waited a while to take, and then you saw <laughs> her, and you're all doing it. So, yeah, so last summer they were doing it, like if you had a EDU email, you could sign up for the first year for a dollar, and so I did. Now, y'all, I am <laughs> rushing through this summer to do all the Masterclasses before September hits, and I got, because I'm a fan of three-something, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so not happening. But yeah, so as soon as I saw she had one, I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I need to actually use this dollar that I signed yeah. up. Yeah. And so, yeah, no. But so, like, you was said, that the first? So that was the first master class you did? That was the first master class I did too. Like, I, I started Walter Mosley's, but I, like, I didn't get back into okay. it. And not because it wasn't good, but because I just wasn't in a place where I was like, let me sit down and actually yeah, learn. Because you so, do after this. You do, yeah. like, because it's not like it's not what I realize is not something you could just watch and then come back to it. Like, you kind of actually need to sit for the entire class or at least a good chunk of it yeah. to like get value out of it. And that's not what I was doing at first. I was like, oh, I'll watch a video a day. Why I thought that was smart. <laughs> don't, don't ask. I watched me. it all in one sitting. I thought I it was did. I just, no, no. Okay. the NK class I did all in one sitting, but when I did Walter Mosley, I was like, oh, okay, right. I'll just. I'll make it like a class. Hey, hey, hey. No. No. <laughs> Say hi to people. Hey, Regina. Hello. Hey, Michael. I'm not pulling the beaver card today, Michael. Oh, oh. Hey. Um, and Kate says hello. 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 <laughs> I'm all right. Let me do it. Say hello. Laura, hello. Um, it's the three fictioneers. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm doing a writing experiment called the Writing Truth or Dare Challenge. Oh, Ooh. Um, where are we here? Oh, everyone's saying hi to each other and then saying hi. I feel like I should yeah. be typing in hi to Me too. Okay. Me too. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we basically, um, did you end up, you ended up spreading out a little bit though. I did, yeah. So I, I agree with y'all that doing it like once a day will not cut it. So I did them in chunks. Okay. So I did like all the, from the beginning through like the world building. And then oh, okay. I did like all the character stuff and then all the whatever else, the like personal development, I guess. Right. Writer right. stuff. Right. And I kind of did it like that, which I feel like hers was segmented off a lot better than um, a couple of the others I've taken where it felt more like you could do that, where it was like okay. uh, multiple 
class or like classes in one subject. Right. Um, whereas like uh, the James Patterson one, it felt kind of like a little bit more all over the place. Um, so books. No, <laughs> 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 I've never ever read any of his books, so I can't. I it's crazy because the boyfriend swears yeah. by him. Like the boyfriend loves. Oh him. really? Okay. Yeah. And like we started one and then like never went back to it. And it wasn't because it wasn't interesting. We just never went back to it. Right. And I, I don't know exactly why. Yeah. And But he swears by it. But he has been on this James Patterson book for like three <laughs> months. And I'm like, he don't do like a bunch of uh, like series, like right. well, like series in the form of like a, a fantasy. So I'm like, what's taking you so long? <laughs> this is so good, guy. Because when I get a book, for the most part, I be speeding through that thing. Yeah. You know, with time. So I mean, hello. Like like I said, I'm on the fourth book, and you know how much I love. Right, right. So, and, and like, you know, and even the NK Jemison, like I'm on the inheritance trilogy and I, I'm loving every time I sit down or either to read right. it or listen to it. But it's like, you know, you don't have the time and then it's just so right. frustrating. And the other thing I was realizing is too, is that the only time I can really listen to an audiobook is when I'm doing something like sewing. Yeah. I can't just listen to an audiobook. And not Otherwise, everything that I do is like I'm writing or editing, so can't do it there, you right. know, or, 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 or even, you know, editing a YouTube video, you can't do it there. You know, there's just like all the stuff takes different kinds of, so it's, it's difficult to find time. Yeah. Well, and like, I'm never just laying down and listening to an audio book. Yeah, like, I, I have to, I have to be doing something. I have to be on a walk. I have to be doing the dishes. Like, there's no, I don't know why it is. Like, I can sit with a real book and chill, but audio. I, like, so, so I can't do it. Like, I can't do that either. Like, yeah. I can't for like, and I know that is this productivity capitalistic mindset that like is just in our society because it, to me I feel lazy like I feel lazy if I'm only reading a book so that's why I listen to audio oh, books because okay. I can listen to the book and I can crochet or I can wash dishes or I can wash clothes yeah. like I know that's what it is for me and yeah. I yeah. hate it because it's like Guilt, yeah. but then i have moments like becca's new book that comes out and i don't have the audio book so i have to sit there and i'm like okay don't remind right, me let's go to work <laughs> let's go to work let's go, to work. Let's go to work. and so i appreciate those moments right. because for that time i'm completely immersed in that world like that i sense. can't leave it and so yeah. like it works out yeah, yeah. And honestly, it does feel like you're accomplishing something when you're reading it physically as mm -hmm. opposed to audio where it's almost like, like when you're watching TV and you can do other things. Yeah. 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 Um, we got some more people coming in. Hello. Hello. Uh, finally, made your life. Hello. Um, I'm currently going through hers and I agree, especially about the Jane Patterson. And now I gave like Jane Patterson shape. <laughs> never even read them before um <laughs> I made it yay um I can tell the toddler I'm busy if I'm doing laundry the dishes but I put them down oh. <laughs> yeah right um if I just sit and listen to a podcast or audiobook I'll fall asleep even if it's interesting I do that too sometimes not sure why so I, need I think it's out. like my parents uh read to us when we were kids um and i okay. think it's conditioned in me that it's like if someone is reading to me and i'm just like hanging out that it's like it's sleep time it's sleep so, time yeah. yeah i will fall asleep i will say I that listen to an audiobook for sure i will completely agree that i can't yeah. listen to an audiobook and lay down because i will wake up and be like this i didn't finish this book now <laughs> yeah I can remember I was and the type of person that I hear when I'm listening to like I Frasier comes into my dreams all the time like, there's <laughs> always a Frasier in one of my dreams and so like I have to decipher what I just heard because I was halfway asleep and what was the last thing I like actually, actually yeah I hate yep. that I hate that so much so it's like no nope, you gotta crochet you gotta be doing something because I'm not gonna fall asleep crocheting I can't do that yeah I <laughs> know yeah, it's same, and that's why I do it when I sew, because it's like, okay. Um, and then, uh, like, oh, th oh, thank you, Regina, yay! Um, but uh, I know, and you know, I've been terrible. I didn't I didn't really tell anybody about the book coming out. 
surprise. Well, surprise. I'm telling everybody, y'all, on <laughs> July 15th, Dream Diaries 2 Blood <laughs> Time came out and it was freaking amazing. Oh. I have a review on both Goodreads and I Amazon, know. so go check it out. There you go. Yeah, I think it's hard. It's love because y'all, I write reviews. I've only posted reviews for Becca. Like, I have <laughs> a, like 10,000 word document of reviews for books I've read and have not posted not one. Oh my gosh. Because like, I'm like, well, because like, so some of them are like, they're like super in depth and I don't know, like I want to oh, post I them see. somewhere, but like not in Goodreads. Like to because say like, I, or... Right, like I talk about like the conversations that they made me have with myself or with other people after I, I read them. I love a review stuff. like that. So, Right, but this, but if for I guess for me it's more sort of like talk out my feelings about right. the book as I'm oh, yeah. doing it, and, I write it out. and so for yours I like write them that way and then I go back and I'd be like so take out the <laughs> yeah this is for okay no spoilers yeah, I'm bad about that when I like a book I'm like okay y'all this part had me like da -da 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 -da, and you can't do that for people trying to review that doesn't work. <laughs> I love the idea of like writing your reviews for yourself about conversations that inspired you to have though, or like thoughts that yeah. you, a journey you went on after. I think that's so cool. Yeah, I think that's really cool too. I would, I, I would be really interested to read that because it would make me think, oh, oh, okay. Like these are the kinds of things that I'll be thinking about. I like that. My mother uh, read when I heard it's not my job to entertain you as a kid. I read with the... I read with the little to break the mindset for sure. I saw, I always thought of the things adults do to avoid fun. Oh, that's so funny. And now I worry about dismissing my son in the same way. Got to bring him into it. So I read plenty. It's just a lot of picture books. No, yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Um, the last time I listened to an audiobook while I bled, the whole story of him is once upon a time there was the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's all like, oh, it's a bug. Oh, it's over. Um, I must say I'm enjoying Bella. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I have a book that I'm going to put on Bella with a friend, but, um, but we have to just edit it first. And I'm not sure if we're going to do it yet. Um, audiobooks aren't my thing. Hard to focus. Bella Shore's like, yeah, the, I, I can see that. Like, um, I thought I couldn't do audiobooks either. Um, and then, um, and then I just sort of got into this place where I was all like, I'm not going to finish these books unless. I use an audio, yeah, audio book. Right. And, uh, and so it kind of became like a thing where it's like, if you want, if I want to read all these books that I have now in my list, the only way I'm really going to accomplish that is if I um, do the audio books because yeah. I, I can't sit down and read. I don't have the time during the day, you know? Yeah. Um, I wish I did, but, um, but anyway, but anyway, about NK Jefferson's <laughs> masterclass, which is pretty supposed to be about. Um, so what do you guys, I know it was a while since we saw it, but like what honestly was your favorite part? Oh. Did you have like a favorite part? Or was it like more of just like in general, it got you? I will say, uh, Shay, do you have one already? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I know, I know. I okay. was like, can I say the whole thing? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll say that hers was the first one. So I've done three. Um, I did James Patterson's, Neil Gaiman's, and um, N.K. Jemison's. Hers was the first one that, like, as she was sitting down to do the exercise, I, like, got my notebook and did it with her. Okay. And actively doing that with her was probably my favorite part. I loved how she broke down the world building and, like, made it with her whole Element X thing and all this other stuff. I was like, oh, okay. I feel like... I have a lot more to my world building I'll take forward. Um, so I, if I had to choose a favorite, that is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's for sure. Because it was like just the way that she, because she honestly made it feel like, you know, I love it. So, um, uh, she honestly made you feel like you were just taking a class. Yeah, like you know? I was and, in a lecture hall. It yeah, like, exactly. Like, and and, and like, room. oh, okay. And like, but not just, not just like a you know like a regular class, but a class that you have been dying to get into, and it's everything you ever thought it would be. You know, oh, it was good, wasn't it? Yes, it was good, wasn't it? Don't. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> give me love. <laughs> what was your favorite part, Jay? Um, so I think if I had to, okay, so not necessarily a part, but a thing yeah. was her vocabulary. 
Like she was dropping words that I had never heard that I like, like I, I'm looking right here, like definition, cosmogony. What is <laughs> like, make, it look that up. Yeah. Like, make it a thing? Cause if so, like I wouldn't even be surprised that you have the capability of doing that because you're just NK freaking Jemison. So like, <laughs> right. it, but like I I felt like I was constantly learning and not just listening, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like, you know how, like, sometimes in lectures, you're, like, listening to what's going on, but you're not actively, like, thinking about how you can engage it in your own work. And, like, that's what I felt throughout the, throughout what was going on was I was like, dang, especially when she got into, like, how to create the world and, like, what, like, cultural appropriation looks like as a writer. And, like, it's a thing. You're going to do it. You need to do it right. Yeah. Like, Everything yeah. stems from something else because it stems from something you've seen that made you think, oh, I'd like to write about this in this way. Yeah. And like, even in that concept, I hadn't even considered that. Like, yeah. you know, we hear all the time, there's nothing new under the sun. All these stories are like repeated, but like, it's just something about somebody saying it in a way that you haven't heard it yeah. before or just like, that like makes it click. And like, yeah. that was what I felt like she did for me for sure. Yeah, you know, oh, what were you saying? I was just going to say that uh, speaking of a word that I had not heard of, acculturation, I hadn't, I'm sure I'd heard of it. I didn't know what it was. And she was talking about it. And I was like, all of this makes so much sense. And I never (laughs) considered it in my world building. I was like, she unlocked something for me, not only a word I'd never heard of, but a whole concept. So yeah, Yeah. anyways. (laughs) And yeah, that was true too. It's like, it's like, it's a lot of, some of the things that she said are things that you I've definitely had already thought about, but the way that she said it opened up like five more doors. Like, yes. you know, where I was all like, oh yeah, you know, when you world build, you know, this and that, and that, you know, and you're like, okay, that makes sense. And you do this and you like make sure you include this and whatever. But then she'd be like, boom, 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 with like five other points. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even consider that. Like, I didn't yeah. even think right. about that. And yeah. this makes me so excited because I feel like I can immediately apply it to, you know, my, my fantasy book. So it was just like, it was just, for me, it was just like this energy that kept building, like every video that I was watching, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And it just got me like more excited to work on, you know, something like that, which was my fantasy book. You know, it's like, oh my God, now I have, to. you know, so I'm wondering if like people that normally don't, like, don't write fantasy that watch her. Her, her master too. Like, I need fantasy now. That yeah. was definitely me because, like, you know, like most of my stuff is contemporary. Like, right. I've written like some things that could be s in the future. Right, right. But I, I didn't know enough to like feel confident or comfortable doing it, and so that's why I've stayed within the world we live in. And so, like after that, like, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, well, this. I know what to do in this. And then yeah. It was. It was because, like, especially when yeah. she talked about the globe and how, like, the equator works and yeah. how, like, that yeah. and all of that. Because the, the fantasy story I had was, like, about, like, seven islands. And I, there were things that she mentioned that I had never even thought about or considered. Because I've never lived on an island, right? So I wouldn't think about these things. Right. And so just the stuff that she said, and then even when she started talking about like uh curse words in in yes. the world, yeah, and when she said it, I was like, duh, because I've been reading fantasy and every fantasy book I have has some version of this, yep. but I didn't think like I just was like, Oh, they have fun picking out new curse words. But <laughs> right. it wasn't like thinking as like, no, the curse words have That's meaning right. to the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And even just like, even what I loved about the way that she did it is that even just saying that and then, but then she gave an example, which I think really, she did that a lot. And I think that's what really made it click for me because I, I like examples. Like people can say something and teach me something and it, and I understand it and I can like, you know, process it. But as soon as she said, you know, like very almost like offhanded, she's like, like if it's a world full of water and like their curse word is for the sun, you know, and you're like, Oh, like that just one little flippant flippant sentence that she's all like, you know, like that. And you're like, oh my God. She was so she was so good at that. I even love there were times where she was like trying to give an example and she's like, 
Oh, uh, that's a bad example. Let me try again. But I love that they kept it in there because it yeah. made her feel so like relatable and yes. great. I felt like right. I was just hanging out with her instead. And but right. yeah, every yeah. single time she like tripled down with an example or another example. And at the yeah. same time, I didn't feel like all my world building I'd done before was bad. It, no, it, not at it all. Me, it made me yeah. reflect on like, oh, I've actually been doing some of this kind of innately just from reading yeah. so much, but I yeah. didn't. It's like you said, i have done one door and then she opened up five more. Yes. And everyone was like, yeah. And then it makes you like proud of the stuff that you yes. have. Like, oh, I did that. I did yeah. that. Yeah. 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 You're like, I was already on the right train. Didn't yeah. even know it. Ah, I already was working on what AK said. Like every time she said something, I was like, oh, I was already doing that. I know, and on, honestly, on a whole other level too, because like she's exactly my age. Like some of the things she would reference, it was like that, you know, it, it just is that moment of like, you know, when you're from the same, you know, you're the same age, same thing, like same pop culture, like in the, like when she mentioned the Gorman Gas novels, like I literally stood up and was like, oh, I've never heard anyone mention the Gorman Gas novels, like ever. Like I, I've just never heard that. Like it's always seems like, and I didn't even think it was an obscure book, but it's like our series, um, but like the first book, Titus Grown, is like one of my favorite books of all time. And the fact that she like brought it up was just like, I just blows my mind. It was like- I feel like that was my favorite part about watching your video was yeah. like seeing how much like you knew, like, cause she was talking about stuff that like I knew of, but did not know right. because I wasn't alive for it. It wasn't my generation. And yeah. so like watching your video, especially knowing what was coming and you didn't know yet. <laughs> I know the mountain the I was best feeling ever. Like so when you started so talking about the mountain, I was like, oh, she is going to blow the her whole, gasket when she watches it. It was so funny because I literally, you know, I'd watch something film, watch something film, watch something film. And so I literally just filmed the like, well, you know, like with for me, like with Mount St. Helens or whatever. And then I'm like, play. And then she's all like, Mount St. Helens. And I'm all like, what? But <laughs> that feels obscure too, because, you know, it was so important to me as a child because I was there, you know, and it was a, something that I experienced like physically. But then to have her make reference to it, it was just like, yeah, it was like, it was, I felt like there were like so many of those moments during this whole thing that like, not only did she just like blow my mind and open my mind to so many different things that I think are going to make my story better. It was also like on a personal level of like, yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, amazing vibe. She was, yeah, she was amazing. <laughs> oh, did somebody else? <laughs> Puppy. Oh, tight. Tight. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I must admit. <laughs> um, I wish R.L. Stein, N.K. Jemison, and LeVar. Oh, LeVar Burton. I wanted to check that one I out. I want to do the R.L. Stein and LeVar Burton. Yeah. yeah. Can I tell you, one of them I want to do that's not uh, writing based, I actually just got an email like a week ago where it's a survivalist one. And I was like, do you know how helpful that would be for the stories I write to watch a survivalist I, play? I would, yes. I would do that for that's sure. I, so here's the thing. I am just one of those people that want to be prepared for every possible scenario. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so for me, it just sounds like wisdom, honestly. Like, yeah, it just sounds like what being are you gonna do? Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, and if anything, life has taught me from Lion King, it's to be prepared. <laughs> No, oh my goodness. Song stuck in my head. Thanks. Because it was in my head as soon as I said, be prepared. Like, whenever I say it, they start you, singing it. You have head. to sing it. Yeah. You have to. You have to. But also, oh God, there's one I so it's, a, it's a gardening one. Um, it's the, oh, the yes. I wanted to see that, that one, too. He's like yes. doing dresser drawers. Yeah, and drawers and like shoe I was like, I have to watch this. Yeah, that like, looks amazing. Like, I want to see them. Too. I want to also kind of want to watch all the space ones too, and like the side. I am ones. intrigued by that, like yeah. specifically for sure. Like it, the, 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 the forgot which astronaut, but I saw his uh, trailer, and I was all like, "Oh, it kind of like what you're saying, Kate, too, about the you never know when you're going to use it for your own story." Kind yeah. of thing. like so for me, it's the psychology ones that I want to watch because yeah. of my story. Because yeah. you know the like yeah. psych thriller is like my thing that I want to get good at. And I so, like, there's one, and it's like the art of communicating with people. And I feel like I was like, see, 
I feel like, and y'all can judge me, but originally I wasn't going to tell nobody because I was like, I feel like people are going to judge me because you're watching all these low-key manipulative things to learn how to like <laughs> But it's like, it's research for a book, y'all. It's research. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's so funny. Um, honestly, good teachers are just people who've learned effectively. Absolutely. That is 100% true. Yep. Um, uh, okay, where are we? Let's skip a bunch. Um, yeah, exactly. It was, she's just, she made you feel like you were in, even though the set looked like a fantasy world, but it made you feel like you were in her living room. <laughs> I wish oh, yeah. my but, but it like, you know, and at the same time, like you were having this sort of one-on-one -on -one class, you know, and it's, it, it would be, I mean, does she teach? Like, is she actually like a professor? Like I know she no. used to be, but does her, she her? She was a um a, a a therapist. Like she was in the but psychology. She did like guest program. lectures, right? For like a I, long time. I think she has. Yeah. yeah. I think she's worked in like both a university and a clinical setting. So okay. she's Okay. I mean her depth oh, of knowledge. Can you imagine like having a class yeah. with her in person, I'd probably be like I wouldn't be able to say anything. Even if I had questions, I'd be like <laughs> <laughs> I have like paralysis when it comes to meeting people that I do too. I I, I can't I, talk. I don't like it. <laughs> and so I, I, I have you had like an experience like where, where it's happened, or you just think no? I'll go to book signings with my friends who love yeah. them, and I like watching them. But if it's like I just don't know how to. I feel like normally I'm pretty good at talking to people, but it's like the second it's someone I admire or I just like yeah. like the way they spoke about writing, I'm like. I don't know how to say anything and I just I can't I either like I mean you know I've told you but it's like yeah. I had like and I think the problem is because I had this experience when I was 12 you know where I met the author I could I couldn't speak you know my mom kept trying to speak for me and he was doing everything he possibly could to make me feel comfortable but I just froze and I couldn't speak and then, you know, and then, of course, the moment when he's all like, well, which series? Like, he's literally, like, holding up his series. Which one do you like best? Like, so that I can point, you know? Yeah. And it's so horrible. Yeah. And it's like, and I think that's kind of scarred me because I feel that same sensation bubbling up in me mm -hmm. when I am in the same room as people that I admire. Because I have been, I feel like, honestly, it's probably what's... Uh, <laughs> kept me back, you know, yeah. I, was, I had like some really big offer, you know, just being in a room with somebody, you know, opportunities, but I let that like paralyzing fear just like shut my mouth and I, cause I'm so afraid of saying, I guess just anything Babbling or and, nothing. Yeah. yeah just, like, they're asking me questions and I refuse to answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're saying. So think I of like, Stephen, who can just be the guy that talks. I used to be one of those people. And yeah. then I watched people who like were nowhere close to near as much of a fan or knew as much or admired or respected people like ask these willy nilly stupid questions. <laughs> and I was like, yo, they got confidence that I like I need to figure because this out. Because it doesn't hold. Yeah. Like because it will bother me because like I just. Yeah. I would think it was like disrespectful to the author. Like, how dare you not know how great this person really is? Like this, yeah. if you would have read three books, you would have known the answer <laughs> to this question. I got a real question. Like that became me. Like, and but like in, when in like business school, they would talk about this, especially yeah. for like women, is like you have to get to that point because other people just like don't care. Like yeah. they don't, and they don't have a fear of it. And we have a fear of like, hey, like I know that I know this topic really well, but I still could possibly mess up or yeah. say something. And what happens if I do? And yeah. it's just like this thing that like, it's not easy to get over. So I'm not at all trying to like minimize oh, it. Oh no, so, call me out, it's cool. But like, that was like my <laughs> mindset change was like, yeah. yo. I need that, I need that. I mean, I've definitely been working on it over the years, but yeah, I, I still have it though. Like I still don't like going to um, usually events and things like that that Stefan has to go to. Um, and so, because I'm just, it's, it's weird. It's like, it is different for women. I do think so. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, and I have to admit that it is easier being um, like the wife as opposed to like coming in as like, no, I'm a writer. 
a creative. You know? Yeah, and it's like because there is they do look at you differently. Like if you don't have, especially in the entertainment industry, like if you don't already have the success and you say you're a writer, then they look at you like, okay, uh, sure, great, yeah. keep going. You know, whereas you come in as the wife of someone who's already like a producer of the show or whatever, and you're a writer and you have stuff, then suddenly like, oh, well, send me something over. And like you suddenly have like a, a different perception. And it's it's sad that it has to be that yeah, way. Well, it's not all cases, obviously, right. but in my case, um, you know, I, I, I find that people are more willing to take me seriously because of my husband as opposed to just me being on your own merit yeah yeah and that's it's that that's one of the reasons why i i did take a step back from the industry because but it does seem like it's changing which is yeah. awesome that's good. yeah there yeah. are definitely changes and shifts going on absolutely because when i i you know i left it what 10 years ago and that's when i think you know kind of the height of you know just the sort of misogyny and you know it, it's just a bit, you know it's, it's just that kind of industry or or, or just rewarding bad behavior yeah um, and so, uh, and now because of, you know, as we know, everything that's been yeah, happening, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're just not putting up with it anymore. Like, it's like, and, and I love that because it's just literally like, no, you're fired, <laughs> you know, to the people that normally do really bad behavior and be getting away with it for decades, you know, now they're just like, no. Sorry, bye. Yeah, you know. thing. And they've done that actually on, on Stefan's show that he's working on. Like there's just this guy and he had been accused of something like legitimately for years, but he kept getting hired and he got hired on the show and someone brought it up again and he showed them all this like, and they were like, yeah, all right. Oh, all right. Good. Yeah. So it's, it's working. So I feel like, you know, but uh, yeah, it's always interesting when someone fully articulates their expression of some idea that you value yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh, did I get really behind again? Uh, <laughs> I'm totally watching the survivalist one as well for both research and being a paranoid nerd. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you so know, it is. And it's now <laughs> going to be on my list. Thank you, Kate. Oh, I love I love those videos of skills. It's part of my research. It's absolutely it's so useful. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, the annual pass to masterclass is really worth a subscription if you can get it. Learning and writing go. It, it's true, especially for your characters. It does. Um, for sure. Chris Hadfield. Well, who is Chris Hadfield? That, that was before you said it. I don't know. I'm not is sure. That, is that the per, like? Is that the person you thought I met? Like, oh, I look up Chris might have been guessing. It wasn't. It was Terry Brooks. Um, oh, the astronaut. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. I thought we were talking about yeah 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 for the for the master class absolutely I I, I the, the name sounded so familiar and then like yeah 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 but then because we got on the writing tangent that I I, I forgot we had talked about astronauts um, I nervous babbled like yeah I almost wish I babbled <laughs> instead of froze yeah I know I feel like babbling is more acceptable because I'm... you're silent and you're not talking like I was not talking i would not say a word and you can see that the the just now looking back because i was a kid then but as an adult he was probably dying like like oh my god this is so uncomfortable <laughs> you know because you can't well, get the kid to talk yeah. you know and it's just like and it helped that i was a kid of course yeah um, as an adult, it probably would have been really awkward. But um, yeah, more awkward, but yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, because as a kid, I bet he probably was just like, "This is cute." Like, oh, I wish I could get her to talk. Like, because like you understand, because it's a kid, you're like, right. I get it. Like you're a hero, and you just froze. But I'm nice. Like I'm nice. <laughs> I know, and he did all of that. He was he so to that extreme of like, I, I just yeah, but. Um, Okay, I'm reliving it. Let's stop. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was like, I'm kidding. It took me a lifetime to get over that fear. Even now, I force myself to talk to people in conferences and stuff. And I, that's what I was going to say. Like, before I got to where I could, like, stand up when everybody else was around, I was yeah. that first person to do that one on one thing. Because I know I can talk to you when it's just me and you. When it's oh, like everybody funny. around, like that for me is like I'm it's bad both ways, you. but that's worse <laughs> one on one. Oh my god! Really? Oh, if it's somebody that like like if I got into a room with N.K. Jemison, I 
freak out. I would literally yeah. freak out. I, I would, would like creepily watch from afar and never say anything. <laughs> yeah, but if it was one on one, is what I'm saying. I know. I know. That's what I. I think. Yeah. I could, no, I don't know. No, okay. So for me, y'all were like like my mini <laughs> in this. Like, right? So, like, meeting y'all was, like, my mini, like, these are famous people experience no. for me. Like, well, no, because, like, you guys have to think about it. For us that watch at home as subscribers, y'all do become, like, a regular part of our, like, daily lives. And we, most of us, like, see you in, like, a screen. So, like, that's what it translates for us. So, like, that was why I was, like, nervous about, like, reaching out to you guys individually. But I was, like, if I don't shoot my shot. I miss out on like the chance because like the worst thing they can say is no. Yeah. But like even remember the first conversation we had, Becca, like I was like, I'm just like, I'm so excited to meet you. Like I've liked you for like so long. Cause like it's that. It's that feeling. But yeah, no, I definitely but, understand. I definitely but it's understand. like NK Jemison. I mean, you know what I mean. Right, like no, right, I, yes. No, not at all. I get it. I'm not at all like <laughs> Y'all are NK Jimson level. Like I'm definitely no, gonna no. be nervous, yeah. but like in my head, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna do so much better if it's just me and her than me thinking about all these other people listening and like yeah. judging what I'm asking her or saying. Like it'd be so much easier for me to be like, it's just me and her. I don't gotta think about nobody else. Like they, yeah. I don't care if they think my hair look funny or nothing. It's just she don't care. She gonna listen to my question. Right? Like, That's the thing that I think that I tend to do is I think that I, I put emotions and feelings on these people that probably don't even exist, you know, like that they're annoyed. They don't want to be here. They don't want to talk to me. Talk. And, and again, I think that's from, you know, you know, working in the industry because as a, you know, because mostly I was a PA in the beginning and an assistant and that is how they view you. Like what, like I remember when I got one of my first jobs, you know, where, where my boss could potentially help me. Um, and, and he was like straight up in the interview, just, so you know, I'm never going to read any of your stuff. I just want to be clear with that. Now I'm not, you know, do not use this job. If you're going to use this job to try and get ahead, that is not, this is not the job. Um, but I needed the job. So I took it anyway. And it's like, you know, but it's like, so some people, I mean, I almost admire it in a way because at least some people are clear. But that's kind of like also you're also told in film school and even just moving up that that's how it works at the same time. So he was basically saying, no, I know that's how it works, but I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't want to read your stuff, you know. And so it's like you have to it's like it's like it's a hard business because you deal with people like that. And then oh, you deal with people who are like, oh, my God, you're a writer. Like, show me, send me, send me. You know, and you're like, whoa, OK. And then you're nervous for a whole nother reason, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so it's right. just constantly you don't know who you don't know. You don't know who these people are, what they're going to do and how they're going to react and if they're nice and if they're mean and like whatever, because their persona is always mild. And, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, you cannot tell until you have that one on one. So that's why I'd be terrified of the one on one. <laughs> No, I definitely get that. I definitely get that. Like, are you going to find out that this person is horrible? And yeah, just, right? Like, <laughs> That's how I feel always, like, personally getting to know somebody. Yeah. Like, the one-on-one, -on -one, but, like, when somebody is like, oh, we should hang out or did it, and it's like, but, like, I kind of don't want to go behind the veil. Like, I kind of <laughs> just like this surface level because, like, when you find out people aren't, like, as great as you think they are, like, oh, that, yeah. that's Sucks. That sucks. Yeah. It's not at all a good feeling. I right? feel like also in the last decade we've been dealing with that. Right, that part. Over and over. And yeah. Over and over. And you're like, not nah, this. Like, I can't like it. Like it. Anymore. <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah. For real, for real. Um, oh, and uh, yes, that's it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now that I, I'm glad I looked him up. So I'm all like, okay. Because I'm like, I know that name. Um, <laughs> One on one with NK, I would grab a pen and paper. See, I that's what you should. I mean, that's what I should do. But I would just freeze. I think I don't know what I would do. Like I said, I really do think a lot of my fear stems from my twelve year old self, and so um, I've surprised myself in situations where I haven't had issues talking to people that I thought I'd have issues talking to. So I think the older you get, I think a lot of that does go away. Um, you know, it, I think it was far worse when I was in my 20s mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of get this indifference later on in life I still have it though and so it's like it's like I almost don't want to test the theory <laughs> 
but uh, the difference between social workers and believers. <laughs> no, it's kind of true though. Yeah. So for me, this is only in situations where there's like somebody mm -hmm. I admire and can learn from. Like if this is like a regular group of people, I am on the wall, not. I'm like smiling, but that's about it. I am totally the introvert. Like I, if I have to be doing something, I will, but outside of that, nah. <laughs> See, look, I told y'all, I told y'all, I'm not, I didn't make it up. It's a <laughs> That's so funny because I don't think of that. All. I think, I think of Kate like that, but I definitely don't put myself in that category. Um, I honestly, I know Kate hates it when I do this, but I, I don't like, I honestly have, and I don't know if this is just like low self-esteem or whatever, but I really truly believe, because listen, for like two or three years, I had like 200 subscribers and it stayed there. And then Kate's video, which was Stephen King, the How I Tried Ryan, that blew up. And then her channel started just blowing up. And then, um, and then she would like, anytime she would like mention me in like one of her videos, then my subscriber and so like within like two months i went to like a thousand subscribers when i'd stayed steady at 200 so i always say like kate's the only reason why i have any subscribers i, know, <laughs> I, I definitely agree like I'm, i've definitely seen uh i get a mention from kate <laughs> more subscribers and like hey like for those of you guys wondering that's how you use your platform that's how you use it you have you <laughs> other people. People. i know i know like you're you know and like that's great but also like you have 16 books out becca like people pay attention yeah you are a great writer like yeah like, i i'm sorry who got my announcement i quit youtube like 30 <laughs> days on their 90 day video like people pay attention like yeah. you are. <laughs> you're definitely somebody that people pay attention to whether you realize it or not like you well it's just it's hard it's like for me it's just like it's like you know what i mean it's like a math problem you know what i mean right, you're you like know, one plus one equals two and that's the way i saw it so yeah. not a bad thing like i'm not trying to say like because I think oh, that no. people would have unsubscribed if like, you know, if they were like, oh, I don't really care if, you know, if anyone recommends her or whatever, I'm, this is not my thing, you know? So I, I definitely, but I'm just, anyway, I don't want to like, <laughs> no compliments. I was just, I need to just insult myself and that's just the way it is, all right? Um, <laughs> uh, I remember the nervous feeling the first time I really started participating in Creator and BookTube, that's true. But I think I would just send a long email full of questions. I see that would make me feel comfortable. A long question, question full email, email and texting. My oh, I was going to throw it out there that she does, if you're a patron, she does live streams like every month or so. I know Shane, she's hopped on Twitch before too. But if you do the live stream, you can just type the question. Right. So you can like right. type it, panic for a yeah. bit, and then like close it. I know. It. <laughs> There's a whole other panic to that too, live. <laughs> Um, there are, yeah, it sucks. It's, it's, a, and like I said, that's last decade or so, it's been so many of my fandoms. Right. <sighs> um, try the note taking trick. Um, you have to look at your paper and listen, and then they will ask you a question. You'll feel more secure because you're writing things down. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. Um, I still get anxious. Just comment here. Really. I know. I mean, I do too sometimes in just like chats or lives and stuff. Yeah, um, especially if it's like an author that I'm like interested in and I like think my question is good, but I'm like, is it good? Will they pick it? Because I think it's good. Please pick my question. Yeah, like I get super anxious and nervous. Yeah, or, or even when you think like if you're trying to be funny or something and then you think, oh God, what if they take that seriously? Like you're being sarcastic. You're yeah. like, oh my God, this is bad. Why did I write that? Um, yes, Katie. You are. You are such an inspiration. <laughs> yeah, you're all very sweet. Um, <laughs> I've technically never met Kate, but I promise that when I do, I won't be nervous. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'll probably end up throwing a riddle. Oh, God, no riddles. Um, <laughs> I'm bad at riddles, so that's the... Well, Michael, why <laughs> did riddles are on a whole yeah. other level? Yeah. Oh, no. I, Michael's riddles I literally right. made this card, the beaver card, which is riddles make my head hurt. For Michael. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay. I think that's awesome. <laughs> um, so one thing about the masterclass that I think was like my sacred favorite, 
and even outside of like what she was saying but just like the honesty in it was when she talked about the industry like knowing that the book that got her her agent wasn't the first book that was published was a big thing to me um also because like i don't think a lot of people talk enough about having multiple projects when you're deciding to go query and look for an agent because if you just have that one book like you could be stuck with that like not stuck in like a bad way but with an agent and nothing that comes out because you have to actively start writing and so when she talked about the industry just overall especially like talking to like marginalized authors and everything that she said like it was stuff that i never heard like even other traditionally published authors say and so it was like hey this is the exact opposite of what everybody else has been saying but like everybody else ain't in k level either so and that was another thing i was gonna say that the other thing that i really appreciated about her was that she didn't like poo poo like indie publishing she treated it like a like an actual viable way to publish which a lot of you know you don't get a lot of in um you know in, in you know just even just conversations like traditional mm-hmm. right. like she treated it as an equal as opposed to i think a lot of people treat it as oh you couldn't get traditional you published, right. so you want indie you know and and that's fine because you know sometimes that is true you know a lot of people decide to go down that route because they've just they can't do the querying anymore and it's just you know they can't get an agent or for whatever reason because that you know that's also a skill set is writing a really kick butt query letter you know it's like we talk about that all the time like the the skill sets in that and the skill sets in writing a blurb and the skill sets they're all different Different. you know and someone could have the most amazing book on the planet but if they can't get that you can't teach you right yeah yeah you're not going to get an agent, you know? So it's like, at least there are places nowadays where they'll, you can actually hire people to at least write the summary or like the, yeah. you know, cause that, that part of it, you know, you know, I, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's, it's interesting because one of the things she also said was that if you just like work really hard and you're talented, that eventually you will succeed. And I don't think that that's true, unfortunately. Like, I, I, I believe in that and hello. I mean, I've had hope forever. But I do believe that there are people that work really, really hard and are really, really talented. And so I do think luck does play a part of that. They get the right, right time, right place. And it's not, nice, you know, so it's like, it's like, I, it's like almost like I don't want people to think that their stuff isn't good. Right. Just because they haven't gotten an agent or they haven't gotten, you know, uh, published, just because you haven't grabbed their attention or whatever, or you didn't have your, it doesn't mean you're, it, you know, you're still, you know what I mean? Like it almost, yeah. So that I was the time where I told, oh, that's not really, you know, like it's a good message because it's like supposed to be inspiring. So I don't like, like yeah. yeah. But it was like, it's also kind of implying that, you know, people that have been working for decades because you know we were just talking about like age and things like that that it's like you're not good enough you know and i don't want people to do that you know i think it's how we define success too like are you a blockbuster like are you on the new york times bestseller list or did you like manage to get an agent and that's an accomplishment in itself or did you manage to sell 100 copies of your book in depub and that's an accomplishment uh you know so I think there's that. I've seen a lot of other authors, the ones who blow up like on the New York Times list who have done like their own kind of equations for it. And like the luck factor that they put in is huge because it's just like the market was ready. I had the book for it and it whatever, like someone else paved the way because she had a point where she was talking about um, Octavia E. Butler, I think, and um, a few others where she's like, I wouldn't be here if not the work that they had done before in the industry and all this other stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, Speaking about the industry stuff, I did love how she talked about, you can deduct stuff from your taxes. Think of yourself as a self, like a small business. And I love that she said that even for the trad pub people, because I don't know that when I've talked to trad pub people, that's really their mindset. Um, So I think it was nice hearing that from her, because I know indie authors know they're a small business and know that it's a different mindset, but I think trad pub authors need that too. 
I like that she talked about looking for grants and how she got to have a yes. grant and travel and write her book. And I was like, these are the things that people need to know are out there. It exists, so, exactly. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. It's like you always read about like, you know, these authors that got these grants and they were able to do this and stuff, but you never think, oh, wait, I could apply for that. I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, she got that fellowship. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, oh, so recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, recently. And so that's like, that's getting paid that's to crazy. just do what she was already going to be doing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just that's, like, that's awesome. Right. Right. Which is why she's not worried about the city we became having to come out. She's because, like, yeah. like, oh, yeah. 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 They're waiting, but right. Yeah, all things, right. And like, I love one day she was like, I mean, I don't worry too much because the Broken Earth trilogy checks just keep coming in. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> That is goals. That is goals, goals, goals. Yeah. Um, one thing that I like when she talked about um, the Octavia E. Butler part of it was when she talked about um, the reality that sometimes there is compromise in who you are as a writer to get your stuff out. Mm -hmm. And you like she I, I felt like her acknowledging that was huge because some people like to act like it's not a thing. Like there aren't stories that I read by black authors where I can still tell some things are written for the white gaze and not for the actual characters that the book was written about. Right. And so when she said that and she showed Octavia Butler's book cover with white characters on the cover, even though yeah. no one in the book is white, white. Yeah. and she definitely doesn't describe them as white, but it was so that the book could sell, yep. it's like, right like yeah. right now we would be like yeah, we'd be all like, over that yes. that would never ever happen we would be saying anything yeah. and everything but at that oh, yeah. time those were the oh, sacrifices yeah. she had to make for her art to get out there and because yeah. she made that sacrifice we do have nk jemison mm -hmm. and like in her saying that i was like yo because part of that conversation went into for me the pen name situation mm -hmm. and like i know that i've like talked to becca about this like privately and i've said this a little time a few times on my stream but because of like my family and my background like i don't want my family to be researchable and so like even when she talks about having creating a business so you can buy your house so that people can't look up your house and find you like there are things that you don't think about when you first are writing that if yeah. you don't think about by the time your book comes out and it does catch it's too late yeah and like that's something that like I, I feel like for her i think it's just amazing to have that foresight like i know this is yeah. what i want to do i know this is how i want to do my business but i also yeah. know that if i get to where i want to go people yeah. are going to be looking for me yeah. and in this age it is so easy like when she talked about like people can just that. pay to find your address and, da -da -da, and you're like what? Well, hopefully people won't try to kill me because I I'm so look upable. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have like well I I don't do pen like, names. I'm like the worst. worst. I'm literally like the example. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was like, yeah. Okay. But it also helps. I mean, Smith is a last name. Is like right. the it's I the. Know. I can always go. That's not my Smith. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. Right, <laughs> right. right. There's, I bet there's so many Becca Smiths out there. Like you'd be surprised. Yeah. Low key, oh, I thought there were at least it was very hard to get my email. I low key <laughs> thought there were at least twenty two on Instagram because of your Instagram handle. So I was like, oh, was that the first? Oh uh, yeah, I know twenty two 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 two. You know, it's my favorite number, so that's the only reason why I did that. But uh, but actually, the funny thing is, is that I'm pretty sure I have Becca C Smith, but I have no idea how to access it because <laughs> I'm like lost the thing. It and it's the same thing with like. The like, because uh, that's the thing when when emails come out, like when Gmail first came out, like I had like when you have a name like mine, you have to like hurry it up, <laughs> get it. Um, and that was before I put C in the middle. I just went by Becca Smith, and it was gone within like I'd say, I, I think I found out about Gmail like the day it came out because because uh, Stefan is always pretty on top of that kind of stuff, and he's like, you better get your email because you know Becca Smith's gonna go quick, and it was already gone. And I know who it is because. I constantly get her emails and she constantly gets mine. Like I've gotten her freaking mortgage and her like lease papers or like not lease, but you know, this stuff that goes to sign. And she's saying my mortgage company, like when we were buying our first condo sent all of the, the e-sign to her. Oh my God. It's like, so we kind of know each other now. She's yeah. 
okay. And uh, like my mom said, she forgot to put the C. That's why I'm always like Becca C. Smith. That's what's kind of like drilled in me now because it's like, you don't put that C. This girl in the UK is getting your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my mom, Cache. There's not that many of them. <laughs> well, my dad was going to name me Poppy. I'm actually glad I got Becca. So. You don't look like a Poppy. <laughs> oh, my mom's like, we're not naming her after a heroin flower. No. Um, <laughs> I love your mom. Um, I recently started working in a small pub house, and have having multiple pitch ideas to go along with your main work is actually so important. Yeah, it really is. Um, querying is also exhausting, but there are actually companies that are willing to write. Exactly. That's what I was saying is that they, they, you can get people to at least help or edit your query letter, which I really would recommend because it is a specific skill set. Um, I spent 20 years submitting to trad pubs, uh, got great rejection letters, no room on our list. I wish I handled your genre because I love your book. When I had, when I had a chance to go indie, I was all in. Um, and I never have to entertain another editor at a conference. <laughs> That's why. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, um, the reason why I didn't go that route, um, the, the trad, you know, traditional published route was, was really because I had spent, you know, 15 years, um, in the, the, um, entertainment industry and it's like and i just got so i was burnt out of that it's the same kind of cycle with screenplays as it is with with books you know and it's just it's the constant cycle you get an agent you get this and that and they get you know you almost get the green light then you don't and then you get this and then you get to you know and you and it just it, and it's fine you know i it wasn't so much the rejections because you get a lot of those and you just get used to those and you just don't care because it's just at a point you're just like yeah it's another thing it's fine but um but i just got to the point where um i couldn't take another notes call you know what i mean where where people are giving you notes that here's how you need to change it yeah and it's, it's like, our vision yeah 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 and, and exactly they want to write their book not yours and it's like Cause if you give me a good note, I'm like, <laughs> I'm good. Like I'm like, thank you. And I'm like grateful. Like, you know, I, I, it's not that like I'm against criticism or so like, you know, it's not like people that indie publish are like, well, screw that. I don't want any of it. Cause you know, I have editors, I have betas, I have albums. So I get plenty of notes, but you get to choose which ones you think are important to your story. And so for me, I indie published because I was just so sick of having like shelves and shelves of these screenplays where they're just sitting on a shelf because you know i'm not getting them made i'm not getting them sold and i just wanted to tell stories and i'm like i was what 35 36 years old and i'm like i don't freaking get my stories out you know i just like I, whether people love them or hate them i don't care like i just want to share and have fun and like and get them out and so that was for me that was my personal decision i'm not again i love true like i get to, i was like I cry every time there's a video of a, on author tuber where they're like, you know, finally got their deal. And it's just yeah. like, you know, I love traditionally public like, like there, I have no, like, I'm not like one or the other. I am both. Like, I feel like they can both live and breathe and can be excited for everybody, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's interesting that the music world, like uh, with the way internet has gone and now the accessibility is like uh, indie artists or like people who are making their own music and putting it out there. Like I'm sure they face a different kind of thing, but not being in that industry, I'm like, way to go to the indie people. Like doing I, know. I don't care. I like the music. So it's interesting to then be on the inside of a different industry where you're seeing the changes slowly. And obviously, Becca, I mean, you were publishing in like 2010 or something, right? 2011. Right. So like you saw even more changes, but it's like, I don't think the end the end users, I don't think the consumers care. They're like, oh, I like it. So it's yeah, cool. They, again, it's about the blurb. They read the, yeah. back of the blurb and they're like, oh yeah, no. And yeah. Like, you know, or whatever. I, uh, just about rejection real quick. One of my favorite things I thought was so funny during the master class was when she was talking about what her and her writing group would do every time they got rejection. So they like had a yes! or whatever. And when they got 50, they did this and a hundred, they like oh, went out yeah. and shops. And I thought that was so wonderful. That was so cool. Yes. Oh my God. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think everyone kind of keeps that. The, I mean, the nice thing about um, the the entertainment industry is you don't get letters. <laughs> you just get phone calls. Um, <laughs> You know, so it'd be, it, that's the one thing I think, like, especially with the traditionally published, is like, you actually get like letters back that are like, yeah. sorry, you know, whatever. And, like, I don't want that permanently. So I love that they do something to celebrate it. Cause it's like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, let's just yeah. celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they, they, you know, pretty much almost every successful writer has a stack. Okay. You know? Oh, oh, yeah. For sure. Um, if you're in college too, there are paid research opportunities with professors. Um, yes, with people. That's true. Um, I just for notified. Um, we were probably going to wrap up. Yeah, I mean, I figured a good hour of, of NK Jemison talk. Yeah, I didn't even realize how long. I figured it probably would not go past like an hour and a half. <laughs> May I ask, how would you all have gotten through the initial fear of? Oh, how have you all gotten through of putting your work out there? Um, you know, I I didn't have any fear because I had done 15 years of sending my screenplays out all the time. Like all the time, rejection all the time, rejection all the time. Oh, we like it. Oh, cool. Let's do the, da, 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 da. oh, we don't got the, we don't have the funding. Okay, done. You know, and it just was like constant, constant, constant of just sort of that, that you just, you're just numb to it. You know, you don't, it doesn't really affect you anymore. So I guess maybe the first time I sent a screenplay to somebody like when I was like 19 that was you know I gotta say I think the younger you are the less fear you have of that you have more confidence in yourself back then because you haven't got all the rejections yet yeah so I I don't think I ever like I think I started feeling more fear after I got some rejections and then I had to go through that process of just you know sending it to people anyway and then like giving it to all your friends and like you tell me there's no typos and is there anything wrong with this and blah blah you know that kind of thing yeah but yeah. i think for books is what i was saying is that by the time i got to books i was like i'm putting this out there yeah what about you guys um okay so I would say I had more fear just initially letting anybody read it, read it privately before I ever had putting it out publicly. Um, and so for me, like, because it's so like personal and intimate and I didn't know, like I thought I could write decently and like the boyfriend thought it was okay, but like, you know, siblings or best friends did. It's like, y'all all like me. So like, like y'all might not necessarily tell me. So like, when I, um, like when I sent um, uh, Penelope's Curve out to people the first time when I finished that, or like the um, the psych thriller that I sent you, Becca, like whenever I send those, I'm way more nervous um, yeah. because by the time that, uh, or I'm way more anxious by the time Penelope's Curve actually came out, like I was like nervous, but like nervous, excited, like I'm just ready yeah. to see what you guys think. Um, and so true. that was I more, I think, I think that for me is more so the thing yeah. is because by the time it was there, I felt like I'd done everything that I could do. So yeah. there was no way for me to make it better. So like, this is it. Yeah. Um, and before then it's like, I know it's not perfect. I know it still needs work. And I'm like scared you're going to not like it. So yeah. for me, it was sharing it with other people first. So like alpha readers, critique partners, beta readers. So by the time it came time to put it out there, I wasn't. I wasn't yeah. nearly as afraid. I think that's the key is like, cause yeah, you're right. I get nervous when it's someone I like a, opinion I care about and it is terrifying to think that they won't like it. They'll just be like, eh, I don't like it. I mean, it's, it's still okay. Like I've had it happen before, but it's like, um, yeah. So I get that. Like it's that, that's actually more scary than pushing it out. Cause by the time you push it out, so many eyes have seen it already. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's different fears every step of the way. Yeah, and I think true. it comes down to like how much your expectations are. So there's always the, when you send it to your first beta readers, like what if they hate it and the alpha readers were like just being nice and blah, blah, blah. And then you yeah. move on from that and you're like, okay, by the time, like my editor and then blah. Um, it depends on what you're expecting from the book and sales. That's the only yeah. next stage I could see being like disappointed yeah. maybe. Um, but yeah, if like I... 
if all of the readers hate it and none of the like beta readers or anyone did, then like next round you just get different betas. Like that's the, the yeah. only thing. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because that's also my thing is like that's why like as a crit I take like beta reading and critique partnering like super serious as the person that receives it. Because like if people complain about it and I read it and I didn't mention the things they complain about, I would feel so awful because I would know that like you were looking for me to catch those things. So right. like I'm like super hyper vigilant about that because mm -hmm. I know if my book fell, I'm definitely blaming everybody who read it before it got published. Everybody. <laughs> like, like, you you me. You you me. Like, it's not me. I, I did what I could. Y'all didn't tell me none of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, exciting though. I know you it is. It is though. You it is. It. Like I, I that's that you're right. That is where I get the fear. Like when I yeah. said like I remember sending Geraldine Dally to you guys and I was just like, oh God. Because I just I'd written it so quickly and I was just like, and I had no time to rest or really edit yeah. it. I was like, oh my God, this could be utter garbage. And like, they're going to look at me and like, um, this felt like you wrote it in 20 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I was going to say, that's the one thing about beta readers is that usually by the time I'm willing to give it to other people, I'm so exhausted all of my own capabilities to figure <laughs> it out that it's almost a relief to be like, it's your job. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> yeah, you like, hate it. At oh, least that's, that's like, Thank you. That's what I needed. Because <laughs> then you don't have to worry about the stress of whether, you know, the reaction for like a month or like a yeah, couple Yeah, months there's some time. Like, I'm not going to worry about it until they go, um, we need to talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Right. Oh, your stomach just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, working, uh, writing workshops are a great way to get an initial edit. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly, once you get in any, in any way, shape, or form, once you get a bunch of feedback and and criticism and rejection and stuff like that, it just becomes easier and easier, and you're able to process it so much different, you, differently. You know, you're just you're like, oh, okay, and then you you don't get offended, you don't get like, you know, defensive. You just uh, take it for what it is. Like either like sometimes sometimes you know outright the book was just not for that person. Like they didn't, you know, and and. And that's fine. And then sometimes you get like, you know, people that like didn't get what you thought you were very clear about. And you're like, oh, I gotta change that. Like, because I don't want you to think what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And uh, that's huge too. So yeah, I think it's just the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, I wrote as Linda White. Oh, that's, so, oh, in Star Trek? In Man From Uncle? Oh, wow. Oh, neat. Why did That's I miss so this cool. whole conversation? I did. Anyway, this sounds like a fascinating Oh, Laura had asked about the fan fiction. What tried my, uh, I follow the fiction that really, like, okay. Um, I love fan fiction. Okay, that's cool. You know what? It's so funny because I used to do spec scripts for TV shows and I, oh, now I think of them. I'm like, you know, I kind of like fan fiction because you're writing your own episode. Yeah, you know what I mean. But people yeah. use them as a tool in the industry. That's how you get gigs. So it's like this is not called fan fiction. It's a spec script. You know, you get contests, entire contests dedicated to, you know, essentially spec scripts for shows to show that you can write for the show. I mean, that's what essentially it is. It's all like, have you captured the characters? Do you know how to write for the show? You need to know. And um, uh, but it is kind of fan fiction because you're literally writing your own episode. I mean, old girl got that trilogy and then the response trilogy off of fan fiction. So, like, it gets you places. It does, definitely. Um, hopefully, you're over the beta reading. <laughs> well, you know, it depends. It, it, I mean, I am, but it is like when it's somebody that you care about their opinion. Like, I care about everybody's opinion, but you know what I mean? When it's like someone specific that you're like, you know it's their cup of tea. You yeah. know it's something they would normally like. And if you and if you yeah, fail, yeah. <laughs> then you're like, oh no, right? It hurts that yeah. much more. I have so much more work that I need to do, and I didn't want to have to do that. Yeah. I, to do. Um, I read the Secret Garden, and then Jerry Dally back to back, and they were more hour to. <laughs> Wait, there were typos. What? Tell me, my book. Are there typos in my book? I hope not. Um, <laughs> Oh, we did miss the entire thing. Yeah, we were just about <laughs> wrapping up. Um, yes, they are. Seriously. Okay, guys. Well, 
I'm not sure how much we actually spent talking. We just actually <laughs> talk a big chunk about the masterclass, yeah. but you know, then it led to other conversations that I think were just as valuable. Uh, I think that's just what the class did, right? Like they did lead yeah. us down these various trains of thoughts from the different things that she said. So I think it's a perfect example of what you'll get from the class. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> And we all, all three of us highly, 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 highly recommend it, especially if you're going to do fantasy. But honestly, it works for any story because even if you're not world building a fantasy, you're still always doing some type of world building, even if it's contemporary. You know what I mean? Um, and I always say that the char- the section she spends on characters, yes. like everybody needs to watch that. Like, so even if you don't like just watching that part alone, you will get yeah. something out of it because I definitely have fleshed out characters better oh since that has happened. So. Yeah. Honestly, even if you just do one class of the entire thing, you're going to get something out of it. Yes. She's amazing. Like, amazing. Obviously, we already knew she was an amazing writer, but right. <laughs> she's also an amazing teacher. <laughs> yeah. She can do it all. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we will see you later.